Okay, so folks, uh, thank you very much for being on time for this uh, webinar. It's 3 or 5 by my watch, so I'll start the webinar. Uh, today's webinar is about adaptive rendering mobile web apps using ASP.NET MVC. Uh, so basically, my name is Lloyd Gian. I'm a developer evangelist with uh, Telerik India. My official email ID is lohit.nagaraj at telerik.com. If you want to know more about myself, uh, you can just head over to about.me slash kashyapa. If you are on Twitter, you can tweet to me at uh, kashyapa. That's my handle. So that's a little bit of brief introduction about myself. Uh, my team is uh, you know, backstage, so they will be looking for your questions or anything. So don't uh, hesitate to log any questions. Go ahead and then um, keep putting all your, logging all your questions. They'll try to answer. If not, we'll spend some time at the end. So today's uh, webinar is all about adaptive rendering mobile web apps using ASP.NET MVC. Uh, as I said, today is going to be completely different. I do not have any slides uh, except this notepad that I had. So I'm going to take this away now, and then I'm going to start bringing uh, Visual Studio. So mobile web app. So let's let's uh, talk briefly about uh, you know I, I don't want to get into too deep into what exactly is mobile web apps. Uh, you know the paradigm of mobile application development sees uh, three kinds of uh, models. One is a native model, that is you use the native technologies like uh, Xcode and Objective-C or C Sharp and XAML or HTML uh, and then C uh, CSS and JavaScript. So these, there are, these are the three models in which you will build a mobile application. Now, when we talk about native, it's not, uh, when you start coding with Objective-C and then the uh, the X code itself, so that's native because you know it's it's compiled and then uh, it's put on the on the device itself. You know, somebody goes to a store, downloads it, and then puts it onto the the device. It, the application runs on the device, so that's native application. What is hybrid? Hybrid is a you know kind of a uh, model in which you are not coding with the native technologies like C Sharp or Objective C. Rather, you code with your uh, web skills. That is, your front end will be done using HTML. Your coding will be done using JavaScript. Your styling will be done using CSS. So, using these three technologies, which are primarily web-based, uh, you can create what is known as hybrid mobile applications. What the way these hybrid mobile applications run uh, run are they get packaged. Uh, and then the, you know somebody goes to store, downloads it, but on this device when it runs, it's actually running in the shell of what we call as a browser view. You know, different um, uh, the platforms provide different views. For example, Web UI View is on iOS, Web View is on I think Android, uh, so, so on and so forth. So that's how you know it's able to run. So basically, there is no uh, what we call as Chrome, meaning there is no address bar, there is no uh, uh, you know status bar or anything so the it's just the rendering engine which comes up and then loads your HTML and then starts uh, showing you the uh, app but it feels like you know the app although it's an HTML5 HTML based uh, uh, app it it runs on your system it's although it's opened by a browser view or a browser rendering engine it, it comes as full screen and then you don't you don't feel the difference now the third paradigm is like you know it's been there you know predominantly people have been doing this before this whole craze of native or hybrid you know has been there so that's simple what is it if you have ever gone to uh, let's say uh, Citibank you know I normally uh, I'm a Citibank you know my personal account is on Citibank so uh, on desktop pretty much we go to citibank.co.in you know for the India site but let's say I'm browsing through my uh, smartphone so when I go and then say m.citibank.co.in it's a completely different site which is catered for mobile so that is exactly what I say as mobile web application so it's a web application meaning there is a web server from where you have actually rendered your application and but it has been styled to look good on a mobile uh, uh, you know screen so the mobile screens are usually what 400 by 800 or 800 by 1290 or 1200 kind of a uh, you know dimension so it's a very small compared to your desktop browser so that's what uh, you know this, uh, the web page is served from a server, from a web server, but it is styled to look different for exclusively for mobile. So that's known as mobile web application. Now, what I have done here is I have gone ahead and then created uh, a small, uh, let me show you, let me bring this up. I'm going to show you the problem statement now. 
So I, I come from Bangalore. Uh, I've been living in Bangalore for close to eight years now. So what I did was I went ahead and then ca you know uh, kind of searched for data on uh, historical weather. You know, average temperature, absolute temperature, uh, rainfall. So what you see on my screen. It's just a basic ASP.NET MVC site, you know. This is nothing but you just go to file a uh, new um, and then ASP.NET MVC4 and then that's it. So that, that's all I've done. I'll show you the back end what I've done. Uh, it's a static data, but uh, I went to some site and looked for give me a statistical uh, historical weather data of Bangalore for the year 2012. So what they gave me was they have calculated the average temperature, they calculated the absolute temperature, they calculated the average rainfall for a period of 12 months over the year 2012. So that's what you see, January till December, there is average temperature reading, there is absolute temperature reading, and then average rainfall reading. So I have this. So this is fine. This is on a, a desktop-based browser, right? Now, how do you make this mobile? So let's take a look at uh, uh, first the code itself. Uh, by the way, I'm using the, the grids that you see here is known as Kendo UI grid. So it's a HTML5 based, uh, uh, you know, Kendo UI is the HTML5 based framework. So I've used that uh, grid to actually plot this data, but I'm going to now show you the uh, the controller and all the stuff. So the solution, if you look at the solution itself, it's fairly simple. You know, it's a standard ASP.100 MVC4 app. There is nothing else that I've done. Okay, uh, I have my controller here. You see, I just have one controller, which is home controller. And then what I did was I created a small uh, class. You know, I can I call it as a model for me. So the model is all about. Let me zoom a little bit. I hope uh, you guys can see this now. So it's a little better, I believe, for you guys. So if you look at the model, uh, I just have a bunch of properties a month to depict uh, which month this data is all about so average max temperature average min temperature absolute max absolute min and then average daily rainfall and average monthly rainfall that's all i have uh, just for the sake of demo what i've done is i've created a static list you know you, you can uh, uh, the way you would do it this is it will come from your database or something like that but for the sake of demo i just have taken the website data that I got from some website and then converted that into an object oriented uh, uh, class and then if you look at my controller itself I have fairly nothing here actually if you see here I have an index method but that does nothing you know as you can see here uh, I I'm lazy enough to remove the or the message that comes with the uh, you know default uh, scaffolding that happens, you know, you see here it says welcome to ASP.NET MVC, but I'm not showing that, so that's not fine. Uh, that's nothing uh, important there. So index, all it is doing is it's serving the view, that's all, okay? But what I did was, if you remember the UI, I have three different grids being plotted, and then three different grids are getting three different uh, data sets, meaning one is getting an average temperature, second one is getting an absolute temperature, third one is getting average rainfall. So what did I do was I created JSON action methods. So again, you can argue like you know why did you why did you go with a uh, you know JSON action method? It's just for the sake of the demo, just to prove a point that you know how you can quickly make your website mobile friendly, right? All I have done is I have just one controller called Home, and it's I just have one view called Index View, but I have bunch of uh, action methods. So if you see here, get average temps. All it is doing is it's bring it's it's building a new anonymous object where I just want month average max average min, and then I convert that into a to list, and then uh, I'm converting that into a again another some another uh, anonymous object because I need the data and then the total so that the grid can uh, work correctly. I'm just sending this as a JSON uh, back to the client. That's all. So similarly, I've done for get absolute temperatures, get rainfall. You may be asking, why did I do three different uh, methods? You will come to know when we go to the mobile section why I did that. So for now, just hang on, and then let's see uh, what's happening. So with this, if I show you the index.cshtml, so let me maximize this. It's better for everybody. Uh, so all I'm doing is I'm using uh, our uh, uh, you know, Kendo UI grid. So if you see here, it's just a basic grid uh, which is getting plotted. 
all I'm saying is, you know, I need a HTML uh, Kendo grid and it's based on this particular type, I've given it a name and then in the columns I'm just saying I want only month average max average min for the first grid because that's what I'm uh, uh, binding to and here is how easy it is to create this grid you know uh, to bind it also you just say source uh, this is an Ajax method meaning it has to go and then make an Ajax call where should it get the data from just read it from get average temps controller on the home uh, sorry action method on the home controller that's all this, I don't want any server operation you know everything will be done on the client because I know it's a very small data set uh, it hardly has 12 rows or 13 rows uh, that's it similarly this is my second grid where I'm binding the absolute temperature so as you can see it's as simple as this uh, just say data source read data from absolute temperature and home and here is rainfall so that's all so with this now when I go back to the now having the code just correlate that with the UI I have three data sets being plotted that's all I'm doing as you can see January to December average temperature absolute temperature average rainfall now the question is this is fine for the desktop based browsers correct so I want to make this I want to move this to mobile so how do I do that well if you are on ASP.NET MVC4 it's as easy as creating just a new file and then renaming it to a very specific format so let me show you what that all what is that all about what you need to do is in order to support the mobile web application or in order to support mobile uh, devices itself ASP.NET MVC Four has a very good technology inbuilt wherein all it does is it looks for the browser which is making the request if the browser is um, the desktop browser the normal desktop browsers you know it will it will just serve this index.cshtml let's say you opened up your uh, smartphone which may be you know Nokia Lumion the Windows phone or the uh, the Android phones or the iOS phones or the you know Blackberries or whatever smartphone that you have each of these smartphones have a browser inbuilt right so you just open that browser and then navigate to this URL maybe if you see here uh, let me show you the URL the URL is localhost and then some port which is 40,009 that's the uh, port that I'm on so let me just bring zoom it I always forget to launch my zoom it so that I can zoom and then show it to you guys okay so if you see here this is the port I'm running in so in, in an actual deployment you can you can uh, assume this as HTTP uh, slash slash let's say some site dot com you know it can be anything so ASP.NET MVC the pipeline what it does is it looks for who made the call who made the request was it from a desktop browser was it from a mobile browser if the call was made from a mobile browser what ASP.NET does is it will allow you to uh, you know as a as a uh, architecting the application you can create two pages one is just index.cshtml another is index.mobile.cshtml and then all you can do is just whatever you want in the index.mobile.cshtml just put it and then uh, this is the page which will be uh, rendered when a request is made from a mobile browser okay so that's what is happening now what I've done is I've already gone ahead and in the interest of the time um, I have made use of jQuery mobile uh, I'm not going to get into too deep on jQuery mobile if somebody is new to jQuery mobile uh, it's basically a set of uh, what I how we should put it it's a set of controls uh, which is catered towards mobile uh, rendering or it is, which is catered for the mobile browsers themselves now it's not like your regular grids or anything rather it has uh, sort of neat concepts like uh, list views and you know, all those things which look good on um, the mobile the font is different you know all those things so themes are different all those things so I've used the jQuery mobile and then all I've done is as you can see index.mobile.cs HTML I have created a div uh, its data role is page ID is home you can see I have an header called home and then you know this is the home I'm just putting Bangalore historical weather records and then some footer so first let me show how show you how this looks the mobile site itself and then what we can do is uh, we can talk about how I how, how I did that so I'm using Opera's mobile emulator what you can see here is Opera mobile emulator I have said I want to emulate HTC 1x which has a dimension of 720 width 720 pixel width and 1280 uh, pixel height okay so that's all I did and then I navigated now to localhost colon 4009 
okay so now when I do enter you will see that it's the same page so let me show let me put both of these side by side it's the same site can you see this it's it's the same port that I'm logging into uh, it's the same 4009 it's the same 4009 correct so but the experience is different as you can see here since in the desktop browser I had a pretty good width uh, on the uh, UI itself so I was able to put all these three into different uh, uh, you know grids and then put it but on the mobile the philosophy is completely different so what I did was notice here so this is how typically all your um, what do you call mobile applications look like there will be something known as a tab strip this is known as a tab strip all the menu options come on the tab strip so what I did was I just created uh, this particular tab strip and I said home average temperature absolute temperature and then rain right so now when I click on average temperature you will see that this is how, you, this is how it looks so I'm just plotting all the average temperature don't uh, look at the UI. I'm not a UI guy, so I'm just trying to prove a point that you know this is how you can make any website mobile website, like you know, a mobile friendly. You can create mobile web apps like this. If you are just supporting mobile and you want a web app, you can completely rip off, rip off everything and then just style it to look like this. So then anybody who comes on their uh, desktop browser or on a mobile browser, you will always see this UI. So this is I'm using jQuery mobile. So there are a couple of things that I want to highlight here. Uh, now let me bring in iOS you know uh, let's see how this looks in iOS so what I'm gonna do is so I'm gonna go the poor man's way uh, the poor man's way of simulating or emulating is you take any browser I'm just taking Chrome because it's easier in Chrome so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go and then change I have already changed Chrome uh, settings to emulate iPhone uh, you know kind of a uh, setting so as you can see here this is again I have uh, let me show you what I put this into there's a lot many windows on the screen so just bear with me so as you can see here I've changed the user agent and I said hey I want you to simulate iPhone and especially iOS 6 Okay, so now what is happening is the, this Chrome window is actually emulating me iOS 6. So, but here's the thing. So, HTC One X is actually an Android OS, right? It's an Android. It's a completely different platform. And this one is iOS. But if you look at this, they both look similar. Why? Because that's how uh, this particular technology is all about. If you use jQuery Mobile, it's going to look the same. It's going to uh, behave the same. You know. But if you if you are a very uh, iPhone user, you will know that iPhone has a very specific UI. If you are an Android user, you know that Android has a very specific uh, UI. So how do you do that? And, and not only that, you know, it, this is all about it. Always at the bottom. Whereas in Android, this is bottom. That's fine. But in iOS, it is supposed to be on top. You know, if you are an iOS guy, you will know that the tab strip on iOS, sorry, it's on the bottom. But in the Android, it's supposed to be on the top. So how do you do that? Now you have to change your code. Now here is where I want to bring in how you can make it a cross-platform adaptive rendering mobile web app. We have something known as Kendo UI Mobile. Now these are the, so you saw the screens. There's nothing but it's just showing all the data in four different uh, uh, you know views or screens as I call it, right? So you can see here like you know I have rain, I have absolute temperature, I have average temperature, and then I have a home button. Now let's completely change this to look native okay when I say native when somebody is browsing to your website using iOS it's gonna look like iOS UI but when somebody is browsing to the same site using an Android browser it's gonna look exactly like an Android phone you know it looks like an Android UI you know UX so let's see how that can be done let me go back to uh, my so I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do now is first thing that I need to make a change is change my layout okay so the layout what we need as you can see here there's nothing in the current layout uh, let me just zoom a little bit so as you can see then in, in this particular layout all I've done is I've set the viewport this is very important you got to say that hey 
the viewport has to be the device width and the, I want you to scale to the initial whatever uh, thing is there. Then this is what I've done for the jQuery mobile. You know, I had put jQuery mobile 1.3.2 CSS. I have a jQuery uh, and then I have the jQuery mobile min.js and then this is the layout page. So I'm just setting a layout. If you look at my views itself, so these were the views. Like if you see here, div data role page, ID is go to home and then blah, blah, blah and all those things. Now let me close everything and then I'll just keep the layout.mobile and then the index thing. So let me close everything. Okay, now we have some room here. So let me first go to layout.mobile.cshtml. If you, uh, Kendo UI mobile uh, comes with, uh, you know, a couple of things. One is you will need, uh, you know, JavaScript and then a style sheet. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and then added our Kendo, uh, these are the style sheet. I mean, I've put everything, you don't need to, you can just put the theme that you need. Yeah, here's another thing. We give you a lot of uh, adaptive rendering things uh, based on these style sheets. And then if you look at my scripts folder, again, I've added Kendo uh, scripts. Uh, basically, I put everything so you can just uh, put only the mobile related, uh, you know, JS file and then all those things. So it's just for the demo sake, I've copied everything that we have. But main point is you need a Kendo style sheet and you need a Kendo JavaScript file and that's it. And you can build a cross-platform adaptive rendering mobile web application. I'm going to just show you now. So in the interest of the time, what I'm going to do is I already have the, all the source code uh, done and then I'm going to just keep on pasting and then, you know, refreshing the views and then trying to show you how the changes are happening. The first thing that we need to do is we need to change certain things in this particular uh, file and that's the HTML itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I need all these style sheets. Okay, don't worry where they are. So this is basically following a uh, you know folder path uh, pattern. So I need kendo.common.min.css, kendo.mobile.min.css. Of course, I need a jQuery here, uh, and then I need the kendo.all.min.css. So that's what I need. So let me just quickly copy paste some of the scripts. So there you go. So now I've added just the scripts on the uh, style sheet. Next, what we need to do is all we need to do is we just have to say one thing and that's we'll keep the render body as is. Now the way Kendo works is, Kendo UI works is you just define a layout first. You know, you got to define uh, a layout, how your mobile web app should look like. So this is what I'm doing here. All I did was I said data role layout, data ID, main layout. So I'm just giving a main layout and you can see that, you know, we are using data dash. So that's because uh, Kendo UI is completely HTML5 based, uh, uh, you know, uh, UI framework and then it understands completely uh, the data dash attributes. So these are the special uh, keywords that Kendo through which you make all, we make all the magic. So data dash role, this is a layout. So Kendo will understand that, oh, this is a layout. I need to use this layout. So what am I doing in the layout? I'm just defining my header. In the header, I said, hey, this is a header. You know, this is again HTML5 semantic tag. And I said, you know what? I need a nav bar on the header and the nav bar should contain only a view title. So if you see here, I haven't typed anything here, but you will see that when we actually run, it will show the title of the view. So I'll show you where it's coming from. But Assume that, you know, this is data dash role view title. So this is a span where the title will come. And then we have this cool concept called uh, tab strip. You know, uh, those of you who are in iOS and Android, you will know that almost all the apps in iOS uh, will have their menus coming in the bottom as four buttons. Uh, whereas in Android, the same four buttons are seen on the top, you know, and then you won't see a text. Rather, it's all a uh, icon based in the Android. So that's known as a tab strip. Uh, Windows Phone guys, you know, it's pretty much similar to an app bar. Uh, what you see in uh, Windows Phone is an app bar in the bottom. So similar, you know, in iOS and Android, it's called as a tab strip. So you just say div data dash role is equal to tab strip, and then you just say, hey, I want uh, four buttons. So how do you place a button? You just say uh, an anchor. 
that's all you need to say and then uh, of course in order to provide an icon you just have to say data dash icon kendo ui comes with close to 25 icons predefined so i'm just using some of the predefined icons like home action featured cloud icon so here is an interesting thing you can create your own custom icon just with css you know i have this is actually a uh, entity uh, you know uh, hexadecimal uh, string that's going to be there so I'm just saying, hey, I want you to create this CSS. The content is this. So this will actually give me a cloud uh, icon. So that's what it, it's doing. It's in uh, Unicode uh, thing. So now we have set the layout. Now comes the mobile page itself. So let me go and then remove all the uh, the jQuery stuff that we had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. pasting one by one and then show you how easy it is to create an uh, adaptive rendering. So first thing is our first view that is the home view. So that's all it takes you know div data dash role is a view dash title is equal to home. So remember we saw uh, in the layout something which said span data dash role view title but there's nothing. So when Kendo UI runs the application, what it's going to do is depending on what view is shown and then if that view has a data dash title, it will automatically fill up this navbar's view title and then it will show that value. So you can put anything here that's going to be shown there. So now I just said div and then you know I'm just creating my home page, right? So now let me save this and let's go back to Android first and let's just refresh. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've just uh, refreshed it. You can see that it's refreshing. Okay, I missed one more point. I rehearsed this many a time, but you never know. Uh, at runtime, it always happens the same. Okay, so as you can see, here's a good learning. So you saw nothing happened. You know, there's nothing coming up. So you might be like, oh, what is happening? That's because we never kick-started Kendo UI's mobile application. So what you need to do is, we need to start what is known as kendo.mobile.application. So I'm initializing or I'm starting the Kendo's, uh, you know, a trigger where I say, hey, Kendo, I want you to take this document.body and then I want you to convert that into a mobile application. And the layout that you should be using is main layout. So any view will follow that layout. So the way this layout works is, Kendo works is, Kendo is going to take up this layout, it sees the header, it sees the footer, and then in the in between, it will bring in the content of the view, and then just create the complete page at runtime, and then just show that, oh, here's a view. So now let's go back, and then, okay, let me save this. Yes, I have saved my layout. So this is important. So you just have to have this line at the page start. You know, I, I'm just, as soon as the uh, you know, rendering engine comes to this line, it is going to go kickstart this application uh, object, and then its application object will go through the document.body, uh, pick up all the data dash roles, and then sees, oh, this is a tab strip, and it converts it into a Kendo UI tab strip, uh, the, the, the control, and then all those stuff. So now let me again refresh. Voila, there we go. Just imagine this with uh, previously what we had. We had a plain jQuery mobile which looked like jQuery mobile, you know. But now, look, take a look at this. Go back to any app on your, uh, what do you call, uh, Android phones now. Take up any app and then try to t look at the tab strip that you have. It's the same way, right? You know, on the top, as you can see here, do you see this? On the top, you get the four icons and that's known as a tab strip. But I never told my core that it has to come up right now that's not done so let's now bring in iOS okay remember we had a Chrome window which was pointed to iOS 6 now I'm gonna go on the refresh this guy okay it's refreshing boom so there you go can you see this this is simulating iOS 6 but take a look at this you know I have my tab strip at the bottom but I never said anything about, hey, if it is iOS, I want you to come down. So that's what magic of Kendo UI is all about. Take a look at same experience. Let me bring in my uh, browser. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the three experience. So here is a desktop experience where I have it like this. So here's an iPhone experience, same app viewed in iPhone. 
you see the view title coming as home and you see Bangalore historical weather records and this is the home tab strip and here is the iOS right this is cool now we're going somewhere let's continue and then let's try to create the second one and the, the second view and the second view is all about showing you know average temperature correct remember we need to show an average temperature so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy paste certain things okay let's go over the code what is the code just this much three lines I mean actually two lines actually one div and a one ul so what did I say I said hey I want a div its role is view and ID of this div is AVG temp that's average temperature and data dash show we give you all the APIs that you need meaning when this view is being shown on the screen I want a trigger meaning I want to this event to be handled by this event handler the show is a event that the view fires and then I have I will write a JavaScript function uh, uh, you know uh, next where I, I call the event handler as on AVG temp view loaded it's like a page load right so next what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna write my script section let me see if I added my script section yes I have my script section so I'm gonna come back here and then say at the rate section scripts uh, this is how you do the sections in ASP.NET MVC Razor Engine. So I'm going to say this is a script and on the view load I need to do something. What is it? Remember I had action method so I'm just going to go and then do a get you know on home get AVG temps and then once this is success I get back the result. So I'm going to grab this list view remember I kept a list view here and then notice that I just said ID so I'm going to convert this into Kendo's list view and then you will notice the change so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing that particular element converted that into a list view provided the data and then I said how do you, how should each item look like so here is a uh, you know little Kendo uh, goodness in that big view we, we, we allow you to do templating so now you may be asking where's the template okay now let's go ahead and then create this template so what is this template all about it's just a placeholder for how my view should look like okay so I'm gonna go ahead and then create a template uh, if you see here script type text x dash kendo dash template and then I've given an ID as AVG temp template and here is a little uh, nitpick here so this is the placeholder this is data binding you know on your page I'm telling that hey you are a template but at runtime expect a property called month property called average max temp property called average min temp so I want you to bind that into this location so that's all I'm doing it's just data binding you know and everything else is just a plain text so how do I use it you just say template grab that particular ID it's a script template and use that HTML and say hey Kendo mobile list view I want you to use this HTML and then of course some style like insert in all those things so that's all I have to do now let me go back and then check once again if everything is correct so I have my view defined I have my UL defined and I have my template defined and then I'm having my function on temp uh, loaded so that's good so let's get back to an Android now so I'm gonna just refresh the page okay now see this I'm gonna be clicking on this second button this second button is supposed to be average temperature so let me click on that boom there you go it's fast because you know I'm running the uh, uh, locally the web server is local it's my development server I've already primed that so it's fast but nevertheless what it did was it actually from this uh, you know it, it brought the data and then on the client side converted that into a Kendo mobile list view you may ask me oh that's fine it's just a list view with all the items so what's what's special about that now let me bring in the iOS guy now remember the little iOS guy that we had cool so let me refresh this guy so there is a home page that's gonna come up now okay now it's loading okay it's completely loaded so now here's what I'm gonna do I will be clicking on this particular second uh, item which is known as average temperature I clicked on average temperature voila there you go can you tell me is this two same UI I don't think so this is native UI looking 
UX, right? You can see the background, it's the traditional iOS background. Uh, this is the traditional iOS, uh, what do you call the uh, blue share, uh, all those things. But take a look at the two different list views that we have. This is Android list view, this is iOS list view, you know? Those two vary in their UI, those two vary in their UX. So that's what Kendo UI brings into your applications. Uh, I'm just showcasing a very minimalistic uh, control called list view, uh, but just remember, just, just imagine uh, the possibilities that you can do. Now let me quickly show you all the temp, uh, controls that we have. You know, I can keep on doing that particular uh, uh, code, then keep on going, but these are the things that we have. We, have, we support, as of now, in Kendo UI Mobile, this many widgets, as we call it, action sheet, adaptive widgets, button, button group, dryer. Remember Facebook, if somebody is on Facebook and then you are watching the Facebook or, or you're uh, browsing the Facebook on your smartphones, try to swipe from left and try to swipe from right. You know, you will see a different uh, uh, action happening. Then you'll see a small dryer coming up. So we have that control too, it's very easy to uh, do that. So what we just saw was a list view, a uh, model view. Let me show you this concept of uh, action sheet. So this action sheet, so code is similar, you know, you, you saw me doing a list view and then it was rendering differently in different OS platforms. So this is the same example. So now what I'm going to do is, oh, hang on, I think I closed the window. I wanted control 4 for my zoom it. I think I pressed uh, Alt F4. So let me just quickly go back to Kendo UI mobile overview. And let me go back to the action sheet. So let me click on action sheet. So this time I'm going to do control F4. Uh, I think the key binding has changed, sorry. Uh, just give me a second, I think my right. control 4, sorry. Uh, demos dot mobile kendoui.com mobile index. Okay, let me go back to the action sheet again. This time I'm going to do control 4 so that I get a live zooming. So there you go. So action sheet is nothing but when I click on this, you will see that, you know, in the bottom you get these, uh, you know, kind of uh, reply, reply all archive, cancel. So this is like an action. The user has to perform, uh, you know, what action this is all about, right? So what you can do is the same code, uh, what we just, uh, like, I'll show you the code also. So this is all it takes for you to create an action sheet. You just say data dash role is equal to action sheet, ID is so and so, on open, on pop up, what needs to be done. And these are the items of that action sheet, you know, reply, reply all, archive uh, kind of thing. Now, same code when it runs on Android, let's see what happens. Okay, so now this is, we are simulating an Android uh, OS now. I'm going to click on reply button. You see this? It's the same code, but it looks like an Android action sheet, but we didn't have to rewrite the code. It's just that the Kendo UI action sheet control uh, understands and adapts and uh, renders based on the uh, OS it's running in. If it is iOS, it knows how to render itself on iOS platform. If it is an Android, it knows how to render itself on an Android platform based on Android's UI philosophy. Now here's the interesting thing. I'm going to show you BlackBerry now. Okay, so, so this is BlackBerry. We are simulating BlackBerry now. Click on that. You see this? This is coming on the, from the right. Not only that, we also support Windows Phone. You know, if you want to ever create a uh, single application targeted to multiple platform, there you go, so we support that. So in, in uh, Windows Phone, when you click on that, you can notice here, it comes up like this, and user can pretty much select whatever uh, he wants. 
so similarly, so the, when we say adaptive rendering, what we mean is, you know, you just write your code once, we will do all the other things. That is, we will know, we will understand which OS the, the screen is running, which OS the page has been rendered, and then we will pretty much uh, render it according to its native UI and feel. So that is something, and then I, we also support a tablet. Let's assume that you want to uh, split view. We call it a split view. What if your web page, you want to support tablets? Somebody is viewing from a tablet, and the same web application should actually look completely different, not like a portrait, rather uh, on a landscape. It will have some, uh, um, what do you call, so this is how it will look like in an Android tablet. You see on the left-hand side, uh, we, we call it as a split view because on the left-hand side, I can click on this beverages, and I click on, click on that, and then I will show on the right-hand side. So the, everything can be done for a web app. Uh, all you need to do is you will need to just use this data rash role. You see this split view, there is one pane, and then I will have another pane. So like that. So pretty much uh, this is how you you can make use of Kendo UI Mobile, not only. To, so Kendo UI Mobile supports hybrid mobile application development as well as uh, mobile web app itself. Uh, if I show you my code again, So that's what I did, you know, in a mobile web application, I've used Kendo UI Mobile. Now, because of that, your web application can look and behave like a native web app, you know, or users browsing your applications on a very specific platform can actually get the feeling of, oh, this is like a native UI, you know. Um, they don't, they won't get the same uh, single UI that you will get in a, um, jQuery mobile so pretty much this is what we wanted to cover we have a lot of uh, materials on how to use so this is one of the ways you can use uh, Kendo UI mobile and then completely convert your mobile web application to be an adaptive rendering and then uh, convert this into a uh, you know uh, supporting all the platforms so the look and feel will be like uh, uh, depending on the platform it is running on so this was pretty much a quick intro into what you can do uh, I know this is, I've just touched the surface. Uh, I, I suggest you guys, uh, you know, come back to demos.kendoui.com and then take a look at the mobile demo. And then these are the widgets that we have in the mobile demo. Uh, at this point of time, we support all these widgets. Uh, you know, Dryer is an interesting newly available widget. So this is how the Dryer looks like. Can you see this? I just uh, did a swipe to the right. So I got this guy. So I can go back to inbox, I can swipe from, you can get both the drawers. So I'm going to do like this. You see this, it came from the left and I can pretty much click on this and then I'll get a drawer on the right. So it, the possibilities are pretty wide, you know, it, it's infinite, it's up to your imagination. But we are covered in terms of like, you know, if you ever have a scenario wherein somebody comes and says, hey, I want to create a web application, but I want a native looking UI. So this is a solution that you should look for. It's very easy, as you can see, with a bunch of lines of code, I was able to convert the, you know, the, the browser-based uh, UI that I, ha I was showing you guys, which is here, to, you know, without any effort, I was able to convert this into a this, you know. Uh, this is the desktop browser experience, this is the uh, mobile experience, that too, this is uh, adaptive rendering mobile experience. That is, if somebody browses to your site from a uh, Android-based browser or somebody comes to your site from a iOS-based browser, they get different experience and that experience is native, you know. This is the look and feel they are very familiar with. So I would suggest, go ahead, can we uh, take a look at this particular uh, product it's known as Kendo UI mobile the trial is available for free it's a 30 day free, uh, 30 day free trial that you can do if you need an extension you can always contact us we will try to help you out uh, so now I'm open for questions I see that my team has been doing a very good job of uh, you know kind of trying to go through all the questions and trying to answer them so let me come from the bottom most and then if you have any questions please the floor is open um, start typing your question we'll we'll get over that now 
uh, Robin Bunga, you're asking for, can we override the native look and feel? Like if we have requirement to show apps similar to Android in iOS, absolutely. You know, you you can, this is all CSS. So what you can do is you can pretty much say like, hey, I don't want that. Uh, there is an e another easier way that we, we have given you. We call it flat skin. Okay, this is the theming. So if you tell Kendo UI that, hey, you know what? I want you to... Uh, put up a flat theme so this is the same theme that you will look that it's going to look on across all the platforms you know if I had gone okay let me show this let, let's let's quickly do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and then I'll say like um, let me see if so if you look at the So this is, you will need to pretty much say like, you know, you need a flat theme. So in the application object, what you can do is we, we provide you a lot of uh, uh, flexibilities here to, for the uh, thing. So you just come back here and then do this. There you go. Can you see this? If you're seeing my screen, this is actually simulating HTC One X, but I applied my skin as flat, right? Now let's go back to uh, iOS, and then we'll try to take a look at how iOS looks now. So on the same iOS, it's the same app. You're gonna look like you know they were gonna, both gonna look the same now. Can you see this? It looks the same now. So this is how you can do it. You can pretty much take the flat theme or the skin and then you put your own, uh, customize your own colors to match your organizational colors. So now what happens is across all platforms, you're going to get the same UI that you need. Uh, Lucky Munhal, you're saying, can we use Kendo UI without using ASP.NET? Absolutely. You know, I just used the concept of ASP.NET MVC's mobile switching, uh, but it doesn't stop you there. All you can do is just take the the JavaScript, just take the style sheet, reference it in a page, and then Kendo UI has this very specific, uh, you know, what do you call, uh, you know, if you want to create mobile pages, you got to follow this pattern. That is, you have to have a div. Uh, its data role should be set to view. You need to have a layout. So that's it. So you can be in PHP. You can be in anywhere. Uh, it doesn't matter ASP.NET uh, MVC, but in PHP, I do not know uh, how you can uh, serve different pages because I'm not a PHP guy. I'm an ASP.NET guy. So in ASP.NET, we have this cool feature. Uh, as you can, as you saw, I did not have to do anything except I just had to create a page called index.mobile.cshtml. That's it. Uh, but in PHP, if you can do that switching, uh, automatically serve different pages. By all means, you just create two pages keep Kendo UI code in uh, you know, mobile page and then the normal code in the another page and then depending on browsers where it is coming if you can change the rendering that's all you know you can use it any technology uh, you know JSP or PHP anywhere uh, Robin Banga, I am not using jQuery's mobile script file. I had used jQuery's mobile script file when I showed you the jQuery mobile example. So if you look at my layout now, uh, I do not have jQuery mobile anywhere. I mean, I have jQuery min, you know, Kendo depends on jQuery. So that is my base, uh, you know, dependency, except that I do not need anything. As you can see here, uh, you see only Kendo, 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 Kendo. That's it. So uh, there is no necessity to use a jQuery mobile script uh, when I'm using Kendo UI mobile. The first uh, initial example that I showed you was normally everybody goes to jQuery mobile to create a mobile page. Uh, but the point that I was trying to make is if you go the jQuery mobile way, your experience is not going to be native. Your experience is not going to be immersive. Your experience is not going to be like a native UX, you know, what you saw with Kendo UI. So that's the analogy that I made. This is how when you do a page with jQuery mobile, and this is how uh, what Kendo UI brings into the table, you know, adaptive rendering, uh, cross-platform, but you're writing the code only once. So that was the point that I was trying to make. Uh, 
how to create index.mobile.chhtml and another one file kui.chhtml in ASP.NET MVC, uh, please explain us. Uh, basically, in, if you are an ASP.NET MVC guy, don't worry about this, this is just a, I can just remove it. Um, I was just practicing, so I just uh, renamed it to Kendo UI, so let me exclude it from the project. What you need is basically the premise in which ASP.NET MVC works is uh, views, contains your controller folder name like you know if I have a home controller I should have a folder called home and then if I have an action method called index I should have an index.cshtml so in the index.cshtml you will put the regular desktop based UI so that's what I'm doing uh, this is my regular desktop based UI so this code is coming from index.cshtml but when I uh, access the same page from a mobile what ASP.NET MVC does is it goes ahead and then creates index.mobile.cshtml. So let's say if you're asking how do I create it, simple. All I do is I just go copy this and then I paste it. So you can see that now you will see copy of contact.cshtml. Remember, you see this? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rename that guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this into contact dot mobile dot cshtml that's all so now in contact dot mobile dot cshtml what I can do is I can remove everything whatever it had and I can just say this is mobile okay now let's say I'm going to come in and then uh, so this is only mobile right uh, this is a mobile view okay so I'll just have this if I come back to here and I say home slash contact okay I need to build my project because I added a file in the meantime, let me see. Um, yeah, Lucky Munhal, what you're asking is when you customize or overwrite the layout by making skin flat, the tabs were in bottom in Android UI too. So it means Kendo UI, Kendo UI is working, but with the flat theme, what we have done is we have always placed the tab strip at the bottom, but it is easier to, uh, you know, it is very pretty much easy to just make your tab strip go to the top when you, you need it in the flat theme also to the UI because it's all CSS you can go override our st uh, default st style sheet for flat theme for the tab strip and say hey if you are in uh, iOS you be in the bottom but if you are in uh, Android I want you to go up so you can do that you know all those things because it's all CSS Siva Kumar, what you're asking for is, uh, okay, Sumit, uh, Mohit, thank you very much. I think I made a mistake in the spelling here. Thank you. You're very attentive. Yeah, so the question is, in future, while upgrading the application integrated with Kendo UI, will upgrading my application from .NET 4.0 to .NET 4.5 with latest Kendo UI at that time? No, Kendo UI is completely different. You know, it is not... Um, you know, uh, it, it's not something that comes with .NET 4.5. Kendo UI is a licensed product. That means you need to buy license from us, Telric. And then uh, whenever we upgrade, you just consume our JavaScript, consume our style sheet, and just upgrade your project. That's all. So .NET 4.5 has got nothing to do with the view, view rendering. Uh, you know, what we have is a completely client-side HTML5 based uh, UI framework. Manish, you are asking for is it possible to create iOS, Android apps like messaging, file share using? Absolutely, you can pretty much uh, do anything that you want because uh, Kendo UI is just the front end, the control. Uh, you you can pretty much uh, do messaging, you can pretty much do SMS sending, making a call, anything because you know we have other uh, libraries that are available which makes easier for you to integrate with the phone hardware from your JavaScript. You know, from your JavaScript, you can pretty much invoke your SMS. Uh, editor, you can invoke your uh, phone dialer, and then uh, camera. You you name it. You can do pretty much everything that you want. But 
those are all possible only when you do an hybrid mobile application with the mobile web application using Kendo UI uh, our scripts do not have access to those uh, those particular um, you know uh, hardware because now it is running inside the browser from the server like the server has just sent uh, what do you call the uh, markup and then it's running in a sandbox now so using mobile web application uh, model you cannot access any of your uh, hardware buttons mobile web application will be only just uh, the data entry stuff and all those things but if you can create an hybrid mobile app wherein you use same Kendo UI mobile uh, you know as a UI and you write your JavaScript code to invoke your camera or to invoke your phone dial or anything and then you package it you know there is a mechanism to package this put it to the store like a Play Store or Google I, iPhone iTunes uh, and then somebody will go to that store download it and install it as an app on the device yes then you can do anything that you want Oh, I know why my pages are not coming up. That's because uh, I don't have the, um, you know, I removed my contact uh, action method. So let me show you this. So I can just come back here and then say contact and then just build this guy. Okay, I can build mobile web using search adaptive layout with jQuery mobile. What are the key features? Nilesh Padil, I think I just showed you uh, what are the key features of Kendo Web UI. Uh, not, this is not Kendo Web UI. I'm showing you how to build a mobile web application using Kendo UI mobile controls. If you build with jQuery mobile, uh, I just showed you just before this, uh, uh, you know, if you are being in the webinar from the starting I first actually built a jQuery mobile based uh, pages and they look the same across all platforms right but if you, but if you use Kendo UI mobile we do adaptive rendering so let me show you what I mean um, I would have to remove my skin so let me remove the skin from flat let me bring it back so now I, what I will do is I'm gonna just first open up Android so Nilesh, if you're looking at this, now I'm going to, I'm simulating HTC One X, which is nothing but an Android phone. So the same page, when viewed on Android, this is how it will look like. Raj Arora, you're asking for how can I download this webinar for future study. Please um, come back next week uh, to TellericHelper.net and there we will write a recap blog post with all this, uh, uh, you know, webinar recording and all those things. So Nilesh Padil, coming back to your question. So this is how this page, if, you, if you're using Kendo UI, will look like in uh, a Android browser. Okay, this is Android browser uh, accessing localhost colon 4009, uh, 40,009. Now I'm going to bring in iOS. So this is a, uh, a Chrome which is now running as iOS. Okay, so iOS 6. So the same page you will see the difference now. It's going to look like iOS page. So it's native. It's looking native. It's so I give you two complete uh, different platform rendering with just one line of code. Right? Like, you know, I didn't change my code. Are you seeing me changing any code where I say if this is iOS do this or if this is I, I'm not doing anything. So that's Kendo UI. So as you can see, I will go and then look out for the list view. So this is the list view that you get in iOS. As you can see, this is completely different. And this is the list view that you get in Android. So the black one is an Android. The white one that you see is a uh, iOS. So, but it's the same code. Uh, I did not rewrite any extra code. So that's what Kendo UI is all about. It's it's cross-platform adaptive rendering UI technology. I hope I answered your question. So Raj Arora, I've already answered you, so you can come back to telvichelper.net tomorrow. Uh, Nilesh, you are asking for memory management or DOM page handling with Kendo Mobile. Any inputs on those? Yes, uh, we do a very uh, virtualized uh, UI, meaning we don't keep anything, uh, you know, in the view. It's uh, in the DOM itself. If it is not there, uh, you know, we bring it only when it is required. So those are the some those are some of the uh, you know rendering techniques that we do internally. If you are interested about these, you know, I suggest come back to our blogs at kendoui.com. Uh, we have a tons of uh, articles there where we where we tell you how the list view is virtualized how uh, you know uh, although this is a hybrid but when it runs on a mobile um, 
uh, what happens is it does a lot of kinetic scrolling on the uh, mobile itself. So here is a uh, app that we built exclusively uh, using Kendo UI Mobile and this is you, you can now browse to this it's known as cuteness.io uh, as you can see here on the this is known as cuteness.io there you go this is actually a reddit reader okay this is done completely using kendo ui mobile and you can see how kinetic the scrolling is you know it doesn't feel like this is uh, actually an html scrolling like you know it does a lot of uh, thing not only that i can click on something i can change the views there you go i can change the grid view to uh, canvas view i can come back from ca grid view to, uh, canvas view to grid view um, it's going to load up i can click on something it will show me that particular you see this so this is this is what you can do with kendo ui and of course this is a flat theme meaning it's going to look like the same uh, flat is a tr new uh, what do you call the ui philosophy that ios has brought in so it's 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 possibilities are innumerous with uh, kendo ui mobile Kiran Gandhi, you're asking for Kendo UI supports HTML5 features. Kendo UI is built keeping in mind HTML5. Kendo UI is an HTML5 based, uh, you know, uh, UI framework. You know, it, it works heavily with HTML5. Okay, I think. Of I think I've answered pretty much most of the questions. Somebody was asking for how to create that uh, page. So I have created contact uh, mobile. So I can now come back to home and then I say contact. You, you are not able to see this because you know it's now styled to look like this. Um, let's see in, in iOS if I am able to show you that. We should see that you know yeah there you go so you should see like this is a mobile view so that's easy all I did was rename the page as contact that mobile dot uh, and then that's it the ASP.NET will automatically serve whichever page it uh, looks correct so that's how easy it is in ASP.NET MVC but that's not the point that I'm trying to make what I'm trying to make is if you use KUI you get adaptive rendering you get cross-platform support for your mobile web applications uh, let me look at any other questions there. Hanu Evuri, you're asking for does Kendo UI and jQuery mobile will work together? Well, it will, but I don't see the need because, uh, you know, we have much more uh, uh, superior controls when compared to jQuery mobile and uh, we pretty much keep bringing, keep bringing a new control every now and then. I'm not sure if jQuery mobile supports a tablet. Uh, we support tablet with the separate uh, controls like popover. Uh, I can show you that example. So popover is one of the iOS uh, pretty famous uh, you know, control. Uh, wherein let's say you are an iPad and then uh, you have this button which says select people you want to click on that so this is known as a popover you know on the right hand side what do you see the small I'm not sure if uh, this is the this is the UI uh, or the UX which is uh, prescribed by iPad or uh, iOS for iPads that is anywhere there is a section where I mean there is a scenario where people has to make a kind of a choice yeah on iPad you will see this is known as a popover so I'm not sure if jQuery has a popover we have this popover and then we also showed you split view so split view is something that you would need when you're supporting uh, you know your uh, iPads or Android tablets so this is what we give you, you now look at this uh, this is ready-made you don't have to do anything so I'm not sure if jQuery mobile does all these things Sridhar, yeah, you're asking for how to convert mobile web app to hybrid app. Very good question. All you need to do is you can just take whatever HTML code that you wrote. I'm talking from the perspective of Kendo UI. I'm not sure about jQuery mobile, how you would do it. I think it's a similar. Uh, I have created two different pages for Kendo UI mobile. Uh, this is only from the perspective of ASP.NET MVC. If you want to package this as a hybrid mobile app, you will need to combine these two or you can keep it uh, separate and then all you need to do is you have to follow uh, PhoneGap's packaging mechanism. Uh, PhoneGap is the only uh, platform as of now which will support uh, you know, packaging and hybrid mobile apps. We have something known as Icenium. 
ICNM can do it uh, without any problem for you. Uh, you don't have to go to any website or anything. Just take subscription of ICNM. Go to ICNM.com and in the ICNM it's a editor. It's a cloud-based editor. So there you can pretty much copy paste all your HTML files and then say package. One button click and it will ask you, do you want a package for Google? Do you want a package for iOS? And then it will do it for you uh, on the fly. And then you just download the APK file or the IPA file and then upload it to your stores. So that's how easy it is. Sapna, you're asking for, is it free? Um, no, uh, whatever I just showed you, uh, Kendo UI Mobile is actually a licensed product from Telerix. You will need a license for that. Uh, Robin Banga, you're asking for what all kind of app we can develop using Kendo app? Well, I don't, it's all up to your creativity. Like, you know, uh, mobile web app is a little bit different, but when you're, when I'm talking about hybrid mobile apps, meaning you build it, you package it, you put it on a store and then somebody downloads, you can, you can pretty much create any app that you want. As long as you know JavaScripting, as long as you know HTML, and then as long as you know CSS, your imagination is your, you know, boundary. So you can pretty much do uh, anything you want. I've done plenty of, uh, you know, uh, applications using this particular mechanism and then they all are in the uh, marketplace. If you are curious to know uh, what all uh, apps are already there, you can go to icenium.com. And go back to resources. And we have the showcase. Go to icenium.com resources showcase. There you go. Uh, pretty much a lot of apps are already there. I have to uh, kind of talk about this. So this was an app that was built from by my colleague. His name is Dhananjay Kumar. It's known as Safe Bridge. This was a attempt at uh, you know from our side uh, for the women's safety as part of our corporate social responsibility. So you can see that the Safe Bridge is available on Google Play and on App Store. So if you have a mobile phone which is Android or uh, iOS, just go to the store, search for Safe Bridge, download it. It's a uh, app wherein uh, you know it's mainly for the ladies. So the ladies, what they can do is they can uh, pretty much add up uh, four to five phone numbers uh, to whom they want to immediately uh, send out a uh, you know kind of a distress signal when they're in uh, you know, uh, danger. So they just have to click on one button which says save me and then it will go and then issue um, uh, you know SMS to all the registered phone numbers. It will show nearest uh, telephone, you know, uh, sorry, uh, police station telephone numbers, all those things. So this has been developed using completely Kendo UI mobile. It's an hybrid mobile app. And as you can see, there are a lot many. <coughs> Excuse me. There are already a lot many um, apps on the App Store itself, who are who have, which have been created using Kindle UI Mobile. If somebody is on Chromebook, uh, uh, Google Chrome Notebook, basically it's a cloud OS. So uh, that laptop, or they call it as a notebook, that notebook has a default webcam app which has been done completely using Kendo UI, meaning you can, it will, uh, Kendo, using Kendo UI, we have integrated with the webcam API, and we on the fly use all the filters that you can apply to the image that was captured, and then you can set it as a background and all those things. So that's how, uh, you know, uh, kind of people are doing with uh, Kendo UI. I think pretty much I've answered all the questions. So we, we are already 15 minutes overboard. Uh, we kind of uh, respect your time, so if you have to drop off, please, by all means, um, you know, uh, go ahead. And then uh, I know you guys would have taken one hour off if you're uh, there is schedule. So uh, I'm still here. I'll I'll hold on the webinar for five more minutes. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and log the questions. We we are we will collect everything and then we'll uh, try to recap the same thing. So you would have to come to TellericHelper.net. And next week, you will see a blog post which says recap or resources for webinar. Uh, let me see if uh, I can show you how they are. <clears throat> yeah, so this is how you will see resources for webinar and today's webinar name. So if you get inside any of this webinar, 
you see that you know we normally put slide decks today as I told you I don't have any slide deck so I cannot put any slide decks for today's thing so uh, action today so and but we will be having the uh, video recording so this is how we'll put the video recording and we will have a Q&A and then we'll have a webinar giveaway so we'll be picking up two random people from the people who have asked questions because you know those are the most attentive guys or active guys so we'll uh, randomize and then pick two people from the Q&A panel uh, who has asked a question and then we will contact you for your address and we'll ship the uh, you know t-shirt if you did not win a t-shirt don't worry we have a huge lineup of webinars coming up for the new year so I suggest you keep looking at tellerichelper.net for announcement and then uh, you can pretty much uh, you know there So uh, there's one more question. When I use Kendo UI, got many issues in Chrome browser. Is there any specific thing for browser-wise? I'm not sure, Tangaraj. Uh, I suggest you contact us. Uh, we will be able to uh, help you out. Maybe uh, we need to know what is uh, the nature of your problem. If you already have license of Kendo UI, I highly suggest you to go the support way because uh, there will be. A, if you open a support ticket, there will be a. Uh, those sorry I made a mistake in telling like you know uh, only those people who have asked the question will get it no it's 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 basically we will take all the uh, uh, you know attendees list uh, the emails and we just randomize and then of course you know randomize when it gets randomized I, I don't have a clue as to who gets it so two people will be randomized randomly selected out of the attendee list so it's not just the uh, ones who have asked the questions uh, Tangraj coming back to your question uh, if you already have license, I would suggest you to please raise a support ticket. A dedicated person will be allocated your support ticket. He's going to work with you closely uh, depending on your license. SLA will be 24 hours to 48 hours to 72 hours. So it depends on what uh, SLA you have. But I highly suggest you to raise a support ticket if you already have license. If you don't have, then again go ahead, raise a support ticket. It's a 72 hours. Uh, uh, if you are on trial, SLA is 72 hours. Write back to me with the support ticket. Uh, I will try to see what I can do. Uh, get in touch with us, please. Oh, we support OData out of the box. So we have something known as, uh, uh, sorry, Nilesh Patil is asking about Kendo Mobile UI support for OData services. Can you point to an example API reference? Uh, I suggest you to go to tellerichelper.net and then search for Kendo UI Mobile. My colleague, uh, Dhananjay Kumar, has written a lot of... Uh, uh, you know articles on how do you work, how to work with Kendo UI. So here's the thing: Kendo UI mobile is just a control. So under the hood, uh, in within the Kendo UI framework, we have something called as Kendo data source. So Kendo data source can actually go and then uh, uh, interact with uh, uh, JSON-based service or an XML-based service. Uh, when I say JSON or XML, it's like any service which returning back data in the format of JSON or XML. So OData service is special for us. So we have, uh, uh, you know, we if you just say I'm connecting to OData, we will do all the rest of the things. So I suggest go to TellericHelper.net. Uh, click on Kendo UI category and then uh, search for OData. Uh, you should, we should be able to give you a lot of uh, examples on that. If you couldn't find anything, please write back to me. I will point you to all those examples that we have for, uh, you know, getting it. I mean, uh, talking to OData, and then we, I can readily give you those demos. I think we have a lot of demos within grids. Uh, you know all those things like if you're looking for Kendo UI web we have a lot of demo if you're looking for uh, ex exclusively the uh, Kendo UI mobile side uh, we can show you uh, demos for that also so just write to us our first thing is to go to tellerichelper.net categories Kendo UI search for OData uh, I'm pretty sure he has written a lot of stuff on OData and then Kendo list view data source and all those things so you will find something there otherwise write back to me we are actually 30 minutes overboard. I really, really thank each one of you who are staying back. Um, you know, in the webinar, I still see a lot of people uh, hanging around. So thank you very much. Uh, I think I'm going to now uh, keep uh, two minutes and then I'll wrap up the uh, webinar. Thank you very much, and uh, we wish you a very happy weekend. Uh, it's Thursday. I know Friday, Saturday is still two more days, but still uh, have a happy weekend. And then. Um, 
keep looking at tellurichelper.net come back we'll have loads of new things to talk about next year